here. Uh, I'm very excited today to talk about uh, my recent work. Uh, it's actually a work in progress uh, on liquid resilient harness versus randomness. And this is joint work with Professor Rafael Paz at uh, Cornell Tech. So, um, so today we're going to focus on the so-called BPP versus P problem. Uh, I think we have you know, talked about it uh, like all the time yesterday. Uh, but let us anyway here give some recaps on the notion of BPP and uh, P. So by BPP, actually it's like promise BPP. We mean like a, a class of promise problems that are decidable in randomized polynomial time. And the class P, so it's actually promise P, is a promise problem that is decidable in deterministic time. So uh, for simplicity, we'll just call it like BPP and P. So now, as we can see, well, randomized algorithms can toss a coin, but deterministic time algorithm cannot. So like a central open question in complexity theory is the question of whether BPP is equal to P. And in other words, can efficient randomized algorithms be simulated by like an efficient deterministic, deterministic algorithm? And we can ask more questions, uh, such as like, is BPP inside the quasi-polynomial time? Is BPP inside step exponential time? And uh, more generally, is BPP inside like some deterministic time t for some uh, function t? And well, as we know from yesterday, uh, the celebrated harness with randomness paradigm basically tells us that, uh, yeah, so if we uh, assume harness of functions, then we get the randomization of BPP, um, right? So let me mention here, well, this is a very elegant result and, uh, of a, and is a consequence of a, a beautiful line of research, including uh, Blue Mikali, Yao, Nissan, Nissan Winderson, and Bye Bye Footnote, Nissan Winderson, and the Impact Leozo Winderson. And particularly, like Impact Leozo uh, Winderson, 97, showed that uh, if the complexity E, which equals determinacy time 2 to the O of n, uh, requires like a nearly exponential circuit size, then uh, BPP is equal to P. Uh, however, despite years of research, the assumptions under which we obtain promise BPP is equal to P, um, it's not known to be necessary. So there is still like a, a seemingly large gap between what we know to be sufficient and to imply randomization and what is known to imply it by randomization. And of course, there are some uh, works making progress towards closing this gap, um, including impact level cabinets, uh, Winderson 02, uh, Tell 19, and uh, Murray Williams 18. And uh, we all heard about it uh, yesterday, uh, 10 and Tell 21. So let me highlight a little bit that uh, uh, in the beautiful work of Chen and Tell, they don't really actually get like a, a sufficient and necessary condition. Well, namely, in their sufficient condition, which we obtain during randomization, we require like a hard function with certain efficiency requirements. However, in the necessary condition, there is no such guarantee, so we don't know the hard function we obtain is namely of low depth. Well, uh, I, I guess we all know because, well, we talked about it all the time yesterday. And so here we ask, can we characterize BPP is equal to P using some hardness assumption? Or can we find like a hardness assumption that is both necessary and sufficient to get the randomization of BPP? So let's say if we want to prove uh, BPP is actually equal to P. So um, probably perhaps um, the assumption we want to start with is a assumption that is both sufficient and necessary. Well, so here today we ask, because uh, you know, like if you start with some other assumption and you obtain uh, BPP is equal to P, you end up with proving this sufficient and necessary assumption. So why not start with this uh, assumption? So today we ask, hey, if we want to prove BPP is equal to P, what is the assumption that we might uh, work on? So let us present our main theorem, um, which we refer to as a leakage resilient harness with randomness. And as we shall see very soon, leakage, re release, leakage resilience harness, well, and originated, originated in cryptography, is a very, well, classic studied for in the 80s and standard notion in cryptography. 
And roughly speaking, leakage resilient hardness requires like a hard function f. Well, it's still hard to compute f of x, even with the presence of some side information from f of x. So I just I leak you something about f of x, but it's still to compute f of x. So that's the hardness assumption we look at today. So our math theorem says BPP is equal to P if and only if there exists a polynomial time computable function f that is almost all input leakage resilient hard with respect to a priori bounded polynomial time attackers and a priori bounded length of leakage. So well, we can look at C, the constant C here. Well, it's mostly likely to be just three. And we can also take the bounds on the leakage by, let's say, square root n. And we obtain BPP is equal to P if and only if there's a function f that is almost all input leakage resilient hard with respect to and cube time attackers and square root n leakage. That's it. So this gives a full characterization of the randomization. The assumption we have today, namely leakage resilient hardness, is both sufficient and necessary. And well, the, the almost all hardness condition uh, in the theorem, as we can see, well, uh, it's roughly the same notion as we mentioned in uh, Lee Jess' talk yesterday. And we mentioned that our characterization also extends to the low end uh, derandomization de setting. OK, yeah. So leakage is the, the input, no? It's square root of n bits of the input that are revealed. Uh, yes. Uh, leakage is, uh, so, so here we, we're talking about like hardness. We, like we look at leakage from the output of the health function. Oh, the output, I see. Yep. That makes sense. Yeah. So it's like square root and bits from f of x. <laughs> okay, so let us, well, uh, like any more questions? The Hanlin has a question. Oh. In, uh, <laughs> I can't see the this. Chat. Is there a similar characterization for promise RP equals promise P from Hanlin? Uh, promise RP equals promise P. Um, uh, well, if we talk about like derandomizing like all this thing f fully to BPP, uh, fully to P, sorry, like it's like we know it's equivalent. Um, yeah. Well, please remove. <laughs> uh, Uh, yeah, so I think in the polynomial time regime, it's like equivalent uh, in the low-end setting. Uh, I don't think we know anything because like RP, if you look at RP, well, it's like really weak assumption. Like in some sense, like the other side of like the, um, the, the result is like, like missing. So like normally we really want like something that works like for like two-sided error. But yeah, that's a good question. Thanks. OK, uh, are we good to go? OK. So uh, as promised, uh, let us introduce the notion of leakage resilient cryptography. So before I jump into the notion, um, let me briefly mention that, well, this is really a classic notion in cryptography. And it has been studied in the 80s by uh, Rivis and Shamir, and in the 90s by Omer. And uh, it was formalized more recently by uh, Ishai Sahai uh, Wagner 03 and by uh, Mikali uh, Raising 04. And it is a growing field with a vast of literature. So like a, uh, you know, like extensive study has been uh, spent into this topic. So what is leakage resilient cryptography? Well, we aim at designing cryptography protocols that are still secure with the presence uh, of some leakage from like the honest player's secret. So let me mention here, well, in, cryptogra in cryptography, this is actually a notion motivated by the um, practice. So we know like uh, at a high level uh, in cryptography, ab adversaries are like abstracted as being black box. So in some sense, the way like the adversary I uh, talk to like the honest player is by like they send, mes they send messages to each other. However, in reality, uh, crypto system suffers from the so-called side channel attack. So in a side channel attack, the adversary can like somehow magically look into, let's say, the memory of an honest party. So it can learn some extra information about the honest party's secret. 
And therefore, we want our crypto scheme to be, you know, uh, leakage resilient. So today, uh, let's talk about the most basic primitive in leakage resilient cryptography, namely leakage resilient one-way function. Okay, so there are like two parameters uh, of interest that we are going to care about. So the first one, as we can see, is T. So T stands for basically the run running time bound uh, for the attackers. So we are going to care about like uh, attackers that run in time T. And second is basically L amount of leakage. So uh, as you know, if we can, uh, if the leakage is too large, then we know everything from the honest party's secret. Then it's no, sec no security at all. So we bound the amount of leakage that the adversary can obtain by like L. And so more formally, we say like an efficient function F is like T L leakage resilient one way. If no probabilistic T time attacker can invert F of X given uh, some leakage from the input X, such that first the leakage um, while the length is bounded, then the length of the leakage function is at most L of length of X, and then the leakage is like computational in the sense that uh, well you have to well it's like t time computable. Um, so in other words, like if we get like the input x, it's easy to get f of x, but it's hard to invert f x even with some leakage uh, from the input x. So why are our folks here? It's not on the cryptography setting. We will return it to uh, it later, uh, hopefully if we have time. So let us look at the notion of leakage resilience hardness that we rely on. So we here consider leakage resilience in the context of just hardness. So like normal hardness, like notion, what, what do we want? We recall like the hard function. Well, it's hard to print uh, f of x even uh, given the input x. But here we want to look at, well, like a little bit stronger, well, probably like a uh, lot more stronger hardness requirements. We recall like the function f of x is still hard to print even if even with pr the presence of like some site information from f of x, but it's short like it's it's bounded let's say square root and information from f of x. And um, so like more formally we say that uh, like well efficient function f is t l leakage resilient hard if no probably t time attacker can compute f of x with some leakage from f of x. So uh, first, the leakage is short, it's bounded, and second, the leakage is computational. So, uh, so in other words, if we give the if we are given the input x, we require it's hard to compute f of x, even given some leakage from f of x for t time algorithms. And let me mention here that this even leakage resilient hardness is not a new notion, and it was studied in the context of factoring function. Well. Notably, let's take, us, let's take f, the function, to be the factoring function. And well, we can imagine the input x as being some like integer. And the output of function is just p and q, such that p times q equals x. So there is a very easy way to compute the factoring function with n over 2 bits leakage. Like how? Just tell me like the smaller one in the factors. So if p is smaller than q, then I just require the leakage function to tell me p. And then I can f factor, the, uh, just uh, I can compute like the input x divided by p, and therefore I compute the factoring function. And in fact, um, Rivetit and Shamir85 uh, showed that these uh, simple algorithms can actually be improved, and factoring can be broken using like n over 3 bits of leakage. And more later, Maurer 94 showed that uh, actually n to the epsilon bit leakage is all you need. Uh, yes. Okay, the definitional question: You define f to be efficient. The factoring f function is not efficient, so you put efficient uh, yeah, in Yeah, so I, I put like a, a you know like so it's somewhat efficient, right? Because uh, uncomputable function like are not interesting, so. It has to be like uh, at least, let's say, even factoring is computable, let's say, in like almost polynomial, uh, almost sub-exponential. Uh, so it's right. computable. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So is the B condition that the leak itself needs to be efficient? Is that can you get that out? Because. Uh, is it, does it lose? Does the definition lose its interest if it's information theoretic as opposed to having, you know, condition B? Um, I think since this leakage well is obtained by well in some sense uh, like in 
well, in the context of cryptography, like is uh, obtained by the adversary, so it has to be like somehow like computable. But I don't think I think this definition is still interesting. If let's say we get like non-uniform advice like of leakage, well, that's probably like if we consider like some complexity class is like non-uniformly non hard, you can probably think of it as like getting some like non-computable leakage. Um, does that answer your question? Okay. Yeah, so um, recap a little bit. This malware 94 showed that, well, n to the epsilon bits is all we need to com like compute the factoring function. Uh, it's a state of the art, well, fr like, uh, f from like decades ago. So it's not so crazy for us to assume that the factoring function is actually hard even with presence of n to the epsilon bits leakage. Actually, Yanni, I looked up the river Shamir this morning. Mm -hmm. They leave it as an open problem to uh, determine whether until epsilon can be done or not. And I guess it's still open. Okay. So can you break factoring with until epsilon? Yeah, so, yeah, so like the message here is factoring and to the epsilon bit leakage, we believe it's hard. It's like state of the, state of the art for decades. So it's very like um, reasonable to believe like some, uh, yes. Is there, is there epsilon here a fixed constant or it holds for an arbitrary uh, I think in my mind, like in my eyes, like a, a like all sufficiently small epsilon, yeah, like a n to the like little all of one, something like that. The algorithm you mentioned before, it works only for some specific epsilon. It cannot uh, work for arbitrarily small epsilon. Um, the malware does epsilon n, not epsilon, epsilon n. Oh, I see. Oh, epsilon. Yeah, epsilon. Oh, oh, oh sorry, 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 sorry. Epsilon yeah, n is also epsilon n. I thought you said epsilon n. Yeah, thanks, Rafael. Yeah. 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 So, uh, and let me mention a little bit here that uh, in, uh, in the context of factoring function, so actually uh, in the all subsequent orgs in cryptography, they actually consider like a stronger notion of adaptive leakage, uh, which is while well, the adversary, it first learns like the first bits in the leakage function, and then it can choose the function for the next bits, and it can choose the function for the next, next bits, and so on. But here, let's say for simplicity, we'll only focus on this non-adaptively non chosen leakage, but we believe while well, uh, in our context, well, this pr these two things are probably like equivalents. So for simplicity, let's focus on like a non-adaptive leakage, just defined uh, as defined in the slide. So, uh, uh, yes. Can you say something about the length of the output? Length of the output for like for simplicity, we just fix it to be n. Uh, yes, it could be. We could consider like multi-output function, like outputting like more bits, but uh, yeah. As for simplicity, let's just fix it to be n. Yeah, so like we just think of the output length as being like n, and that's like easy. Yeah, so like, yeah, as mentioned, like uh, we require this function f to be like somewhat efficiently like computable depending on the context. And uh, lastly, um, since we are dealing with like derandization, we require um, this function to be hard I like to be like almost all input hard. Well, uh, this hardness, con uh, so more formally, we recall the hardness condition, namely leaky resilient hardness, holds for like all, almost all inputs x, uh, just as uh, we talked about uh, in uh, yesterday. And namely, like any pair of A comma leak can only succeed on finitely many input x. And let me here give some like very personal comments on. Um, uh, the notion of leakage resilient hardness. So in our eyes, it's very nature to consider leakage resilient hardness of a multi-output function. Well, like I'm making very bold claims now, and those are not known to be true. So intuitively, n to the epsilon bit leakage from the function, it doesn't really, well, it shouldn't help you like speed up your computation, right? So imagine if you can show that any general computation can be speed up significantly given some leakage, let's say n to the epsilon bits, from the outputs. Well, this, this looks very surprising to me, at least. So, the, so uh, anyway, 
uh, we believe that even out of the scope of derandomization, it's still interesting to study leakage resilient hardness of multi-output functions. So yeah, we should look into that. Like people should look into that. So that's uh, uh, yeah, that's the message. So uh, let us proceed to our math theorem. Uh, please allow me to jump directly to our corollaries. So first, we show that BPP is equal to P if and only if there exists a almost all input leakage resilient hard function f that is computable in polynomial time. And second, BPP is in sub exponential time if and only if there exists a function such function f that is computable in sub exponential time. So here, like our characterization works in both the uh, so called high end uh, setting and the low end setting. So more generally, actually, it works on like uh, every point on the spectrum of the randomization from polynomial time all the way to sub exponential time. Well, I guess it's not. Um, yeah, so here we will look at the notion of nice class. So we say that C is a nice class of running time bounds if for all polynomial P and Q, it is the case that uh, if T is inside the class, then P times T, T of Q is also inside the class. So this roughly captures uh, the, the intuition that say, uh, well, polynomial time, uh, polynomial blow ups are not so bad and uh, uh, a polynomial blow up of T should still remain in the class. So our math theorem says there exists a constant C. Well, very likely, or it's just, let's just take it as three. Starts at for every nice class of function, uh, nice class of running time bound C, for any constants epsilon from zero to one, the following are equivalent. First, BPP is inside deterministic time C, and second, there exists a C time computable function F that is almost all input leakage resilient hard with respect to n cube time attackers and n to the epsilon uh, amount of leakage. So, uh, yes. Is uh, the function that computes the leakage is also bounded by n to the c, or it's an arbitrary polynomial? Uh, it's also bounded by n to the c. Yes. So we res restrict our attention with <coughs> computational leakage. So c is independent of epsilon. Uh huh. Uh, c is like a universal constant. You can think of it as three. Uh, it doesn't depend on epsilon, it's just three. Like no matter epsilon, uh, what epsilon is, just probably take, 2 .1. yeah, probably like <laughs> 2.1. Or if we, well, if we work harder, like, yeah, it's not very crazy to make it like uh, just uh, just one point, just one plus epsilon or, yeah, I, I don't know, but like, let's say three. Three is like, three should work. Um, any questions? Okay, so um, yeah, so as we can see, like our math theorem is like pretty robust in the sense that, yeah. So what's the relationship between capital C and the time bound uh, um, T? Like the like the cap like the little C is just three. No, the capital C. The, the capital C. Class of running time bounds. Um, the capital C you can. Well, you, if you you take C as like uh, the polynomial, the, the class of polynomial functions, we get like a characterization, like uh, characterizing PPP is oh, equal I, to P. I, I, I was missing that capital T was in capital C. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So okay. C is like let's take C to be like polynomial functions, okay. right. and T is like arbitrary polynomial. Okay. Uh, okay. Are we good? Yeah. 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 So, so now, now let us mention some related work. Uh, of course, like most importantly, uh, we need we want to mention like Chen and Tao twenty one, uh, which shows a really beautiful connection between randomization and almost all input harness. And since we have like talked, uh, we have learned for, about it like yesterday. I'm going to like skip it. Uh, so in contrast, our result here gives first like a full categorization of the randomization. So like the same condition, namely leakage resilient hardness, is both sufficient and necessary. And our result also works in the low end uh, uh, setting. So whereas like Chen et al. 21 only works for high ends, uh, namely derandomizing BPP all the way to P. So let me mention that Chen et al. 21 and Goldleck 11 are the main separation for our work. 
So let's say sketch uh, how our math theorem is proved. Um, let me remark that our proof is, well, mostly conceptual and relies on standard techniques in the literature. Um, so today we're going to focus on uh, the high-end regime, uh, namely B whether BPP is equal to P. Um, as we will see, since we directly de-randomize BPP as opposed to RP, so this result extends also to low-end regime. So I'm going very fast uh, with the proof. So, because it's like really <laughs> conceptually easy. Uh, so, first we look at uh, how to get uh, BPP is equal to P, assuming like leakage resilient hardness. Um, so, we know to deduce BPP is equal to P, what we need, well, like a complex theoretic PRG will suffice, but it's a little bit too strong because we can just consider a targeted PRG uh, since we ha have learned targeted PRG, like. Uh, uh, I'm going to skip the formal definition, and we know that a targeted PRG will also imply uh, BPP is equal to P. So now let's proceed to our construction. Um, so our highlight of the idea is basically following um, from the existing work. So we first use the target string X and a leakage res resilient hard function F to compute F of X. Well, this is roughly the same as what we did yesterday. Now, given F of X, we interpret it as a truth table of some hard function. And we plug in the random hardness with the random framework, and we obtain a PRG. Well, like apparently, the issue with Nielsen Winderson or uh, hardness with random framework is always that, uh, well, the re reconstruction procedures requires like non uniform bits or actually like uh, Oracle access to the encoded uh, version of FFX. Um, but, well, our assumption F is like only hard with respect to uniform attackers. And this is the place where uh, leakage resilient hardness comes to help. So we can basically show that uh, Nissan Winston PRG is still secure uh, if we assume G is hard to print even with some short but efficient leakage from the truth table of G. And this, this hardness condition basically comes from our assumption that uh, the function F itself is almost all input leakage resilient hard. Um, so I'm going to skip uh, the actual construction. So let us uh, go, like, jump into the, the proof for the other direction. Uh, the, yeah. How big is the table? Um, how big is the truth table? Yeah, like from log n to Uh huh. How big is the table? Uh, like f of x, you can think of it as like n bits, and you interpret it as truth table. Uh, but like in Nielsen Winderson, like the hardness of this this framework, you need to like apply error code code, so uh, it makes it like a little bit uh, larger. Let's say, like uh, n square. Uh, yeah. So the actual hard function you plug in Nielsen Winderson PRG would be the error correct codes encoded like f of x. And. And we know like Nissan Windows PRG, well, the, the reconstruction procedure requires like a very short like a, a leakage from uh, the truth table of G, like namely n to the epsilon for like any small epsilon. So why do you need the n to the epsilon leakage? Because um, the Nissan Windows and PRG is only secure if you like, if you, if the hard function is hard with the persistence of the leakage. Like you need some leakage from G to like reconstruct uh, the hard function G. It can be non your to advice and then it can be used to reconstruct as a leakage. But yeah. it's computable, you say. So here you it's here, yeah, it's oh, okay. actually it's computable because it's just yeah. like Oracle access to yeah. the hard function. Okay, um, so let me jump into the other side of the uh, other direction of proof. Um, so now we want to say if BPP is equal to P, then we can actually get an almost all inputs uh, leakage resilient hard function. And um, the, our proof proceeds in two steps. First, we notice that for any fixed string X, like a random choice of F of X will be almost all inputs leakage resilient hard on this specific X. Well, this follows from like a Komogo style like counting argument. And step two, following Goldlack, we can we show that we can efficiently de-randomize this like random choice of f of x, like on all inputs x assuming BPP is equal to P. 
Um, well, our proof is like conceptually simple, so I'm going to skip this proof uh, too. Okay. Um, so basically, our math theorem shows well, uh, BPP is inside D times C is equivalent to a C computable, almost all input equity resilient hard function. Uh, how many minutes do I have? You should end soon. Okay, uh, okay. Let's, <laughs> okay let, let, let me take like th uh, three minutes to basically mention like there are some implications of our results even in cryptography. So we look at leakage resilient one functions as mentioned before and hardcore bits. So hardcore bits uh, are just like some bits computable from the inputs of the one function and it's, it still looks random even uh, with the presence of f of x. Okay, so um, well, it's a central notion in cryptography, and it's a key bro building block for a PRG. And imagine you just concatenate a one-way permutation with its hardcore bits, and you get a PRG. And the fundamental theorem in cryptography uh, is the goldlack levin theorem, which says any one function has log of log n hardcore bits. And the question here is, which one function has like super logarithm make hardcore bits? And actually, we notice a curious phenomenon starting from like the early work on leakage resilience uh, by Akavia, Akav uh, Goldwasser, and uh, uh, Vaku Tanathan. That's assumptions that uh, admit leakage resilient uh, one-way functions will also admit many one functions with many hardcore bits. Well, if you look at it, leakage resilient is like a notion of leakage resilience, and many hardcore bits is almost like a notion of randomness. So we ask, is this a coincidence? So actually, we show no, it's not a coincidence. We show that any L leakage resilient one function also admits L hardcore bits. And in more detail, we show that, well, if L is polytime L leakage resilient one way with respect to random linear functions, uh, then it is equivalent to F that F has uh, L Goldlack Levin hardcore bits. So I'm not going into details what Goldlack Levin bits hardcore bits are and what random linear functions are. So the conclusion here is that there's a deep connection between uh, leakage resilience one function and uh, simultaneous hardcore bits. So, yes. I'm sorry. One more but your attackers are bounded to a specific and to the C bound. Yeah. These not, not, here. Here. not here. Like in cryptography. Oh, this, is a, this is an implication of your techniques, not of your theory. This is in the front. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, let me wrap up my talk. Uh, so today we show that leakage resilience really characterizes both derandomization and hardcore bits. And in context of derandomization, well, in our eyes, we believe leakage resilience is the um, is a appropriate notion, and we really should look into that. And we show that uh, BPP is equal to P if and only if there exists a almost all uh, efficient, almost all inputs leakage resilient hard function. And more generally, our uh, results can be extended. And in terms of hardcore bits, we show that any one of function f, if f is like poly L leakage resilient hard with respect to simple leakage, then f has a L go like 11 hardcore bits. And uh, uh, thank you very much for listening. And uh, yeah. <laughs>